Okay, there we go. We are now up and running. So, welcome to the uh, dual credit special stream. We can actually get a video of this one up. Um, I see there's a good chunk of us online already. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Everyone see anything okay? Type something in the chat, somebody. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I didn't really get too many questions between this morning and now. Um, the only one I did get was this one. So uh, this is a question number seven on five one. And how do you simplify this one with cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth? The random corner. Get it? A tourist wouldn't be from America. It's it's just a dumb America joke. <laughs> okay, so for this problem, cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth. Here, let me pin this off to the side. Ah, okay, it doesn't say. Let's just work it from here. Uh, this is actually kind of an adaptation of, like if you just pretend you have x squared minus 9. So this is a special type of factoring called difference of perfect squares because you, um, when you want to factor this, and both x squared and 9 are, are perfect squares, they're square rootable into a, a integer or a whole number. So this would factor into x minus 3, x plus 3. All right, so that's basic algebra. We knew that already. <laughs> Thank you. Do you watch other? Do, do y'all actually watch other streamers on Twitch? I've been doing a lot of that lately since I've been home a lot. I don't know if y'all can see who I follow on Twitch. It's just a bunch of uh, Super Smash Brothers and Magic: The Gathering players. Anyways, uh, cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth is going to be really, really similar. So these are actually both square rootable, right? If you take something that's raised to the fourth and then you square root it, it becomes something squared. So this actually does break up into cosine squared minus sine squared, and then cosine squared plus sine squared. So it factors as a difference of perfect squares exactly like uh, just like the top one does, except we have trig stuff to deal with. So there's two more simplification things to do here. Number one is the second one, cosine squared minus sine squared. That is your number one Pythagorean identity, the thing off your formula chart. Uh, right here. So that very first Pythagorean identity, remember, it the order doesn't matter because addition can be switched. So sine squared plus cosine squared, cosine squared plus sine squared, it equals one, so it's all gonna vanish. So all that's left is cosine uh, squared minus sine squared, that first parentheses. Uh, the only problem is that that's not an answer choice currently. All right. So you've got to figure out what are some ways you can rewrite cosine squared minus sine squared in order to uh, make it look like one of these. So it's not going to be A. Um, we don't think it's going to be B. It is C, but if you take a look, it says choose the most simplified form. And a lot of people, you'll click this and it's going to be rear. We can look at it. It's going to be wrong because it's not the most simplified one. See, it's correct, but blah, blah, blah. You did something wrong because you didn't check. So. so what's going to happen is cosine squared minus sine squared is, again, another difference of perfect squares. So, so this is gone because it's equal to 1. And cosine squared minus sine squared is, again, another difference of perfect squares. So it factors into cosine minus sine, cosine plus sine. 
which was that last answer choice, I believe. Ah, come on, click. There we go. Okay, so again, that was number seven on your 5-1 homework. Oh man, the delay is really bad right now. It's like a solid 15 seconds. Um, Peyton, you said you sent some problems to my email. I have my email open and I'm seeing nothing. Uh, I, Taylor, I just got your email. I'll go over that in a second. But here, let me see. For some reason, I don't. Peyton, I'm not seeing your questions at all. I've got both my emails open. Uh, if it doesn't show up in my email at some point, yeah, yeah, can we? Can you just tell me in the chat what you want me to do, and then I can do that. Uh, number twelve in the homework. Let's do that. Uh, off the same homework, uh, five one. Peyton. I will just assume. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I see number eight. Okay, so we'll do number 12, number eight. And then I have one from Taylor in my email we need to cover too. So let's do that. So number 12 on this homework. Prove that the given equation is not an identity by finding a value where the two sides have different values. And this is really just... Um, knowing your unit circle and I know you don't have to memorize it or anything but let's take a look while we do this problem so sine x equals one plus cosine x you've got three choices so you just need to know how to look them up remember uh, sine is always going to be the y coordinate on your unit circle cosine is always going to be the x coordinate on your unit circle so if we just look at x equals pi pi is over here so if you look back here, the cosine of pi is negative 1 and the sine of pi is 0. So if we plug in those values, this would now say 0 equals 1 plus negative 1, which is correct, which is not what we want. We want the incorrect one, right? It says which one has different values. At pi over 2, you would have x equal to 0, y equal to 1. So 1 equals 1 plus 0, that's correct. And then so you need to head to 0, x equals 0, which is going to be 1 comma 0 and the sign is really important there because it'll now say um, 0 equals 1 plus 1 which is the false statement Yeah, so any of these problems in general, when you're doing your homework or you're doing the exam tomorrow, um, if you need to refer to the unit circle, you know, any how or, you know, any kind of way for any problem, just remember the shortcut is that the um, x coordinate corresponds to cosine of that angle and the y coordinate corresponds to sine of the angle. And then for all the other ones, it's based off of sine and cosine. Remember, tangent cotangent, cosecant, secant, they're all going to be weird variations of those, whether you take the fraction and you flip it upside down, or you take two fractions and you divide them together. But if you uh, are comfortable enough with the unit circle, it just takes a couple of steps of simplification. Uh, if you are to the point where you can un where you understand what I'm talking about whenever I say use reference angles, use the, you know, all students take calculus, y'all know the other version I can't probably can't say on stream. <laughs> Uh, just use the reference angle, figure out the sign from the little quadrant trick, and then you can just look up this chart the entire time. It does make it a lot quicker if you understand reference angles. <laughs> okay, um, next one was number eight. Let's flip over to that one. Yeah, yeah, leave the question. Oh, I'm sorry, there was more than number 12. I was wondering why it gave me that thing. Oh, so yeah, they just want you to type in. Uh, the left side would have been 0. The right side would have been 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. Is that it? Okay, 
No, we're actually done with that one now. Number eight. Right, multiply and simplify this one. Um, these are way more annoying than the ones you're going to see on the exam because the exam, they tell you where you're supposed to stop. And on these problems, they don't give you the right half of the equation. So you kind of just has to have to simplify and just hope that you get down to as simple as they want. Hold on one second. Oh boy, hold on. Give me one second. Sorry about that. My uh, wife and kids locked themselves out of the house. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, let's start this one. We have cosine sine. And they're written right next to each other, so they are multiplied. And then the rest of this is what? Secant plus cotangent. Now, uh, English is just the language of the stream. I don't have a topic or I don't have a game I'm playing, so it doesn't have anything on my description. So. Yeah, Twitch is usually reserved for people playing games online. I mean, they have like just chatting streams, but it's technically what I'm doing right now. I don't know, do y'all have any other teachers doing like actual lectures on stream on a website of some kind besides this? I don't know. All right, so um, it, it actually says in the instructions to multiply and simplify. So they kind of give you a hint to start the problem. You take the thing that's outside the parentheses, we're going to distribute it. So we're going to distribute this here. We end up with cosine, sine, secant, plus cosine, sine, cotangent. And they're all written, you know, there's two terms here, three things multiplied plus three things multiplied. Uh, when we rewrite secant and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine, a lot of things is uh, a lot of things should cancel if we do it correctly. Yeah, the uh, Blackboard Collaborate. I saw that. I just it. I tried to set it up originally, and they don't let me. I don't know. I couldn't get both my computers and all my overlay mic stuff to work on the web. Uh, same thing with Cisco WebEx. I can't get this to work on there. I guess I could just. I don't know. I don't know if you've tried to look at Cisco WebEx on your phone yet, but like if someone has two or three windows open, you've got to swipe through each of them individually every time, and anytime somebody else talks, it changes the window. And also the video quality is crap. Um, I tried recording just as a test one last week. Um, I had some of my UIL kids uh, look at some of them, and then as I tested some, Cisco WebEx was garbage. So I didn't like it. Okay. Okay. Uh, next step for this one, secant and cotangent need to be rewritten. Cosine and sine are fine. Secant becomes 1 divided by cosine. And then cotangent becomes cosine divided by sine. Now remember, those first three on the left side of the plus, they're all being multiplied. Same thing with the other three on the right-hand side. Uh, also, if you don't have a fraction, it is a fraction. It just has a 1 in the denominator. So, so on the left-handed chunk, 
you've got cosine and sine on top and cosine on the bottom so the cosines will cancel and then on the right hand chunk those three uh, you've got sines that cancel so all you have left is sine x plus cosine squared And here's where the problem gets annoying because you know you technically have other things you can rewrite cosine squared as uh, but it doesn't really tell you what it wants like we could just try doing you know sine x whoops where's my x But we have no idea of that. Okay, so we happen to luck into it. But you could rewrite cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared, and then you could have written this as a quadratic. Um, yeah, that's why I don't like these particular problems on exams, because you know you could have five different students with five different answers that all did the correct algebra, and you just, you just don't know where to end. Well, this one, we happen to be done here. Okay, um, I did get an email question, so I'm going to cover that one. Let's see, number 25. Oh, yeah, so for this one, it's similar to that last example that we had in the lecture for this section. So if you look at the very, very last slide, I gave you kind of a simplified version of this one but uh, you just want to replace x with whatever it tells you to and then you should be able to use some kind of identity to simplify it so x is 3 tangent theta for my version of this problem I'm sure it's going to be pretty similar for y'all's there's not many ways you can write this problem so. okay so you've got square root of x squared was it minus or plus 9? plus 9 and x is equal to 3 tangent. So when you plug that 3 tangent in for x, you end up with this. Now remember that whole thing gets squared, so not only does the tangent get squared, but the 9 also gets squared. So you've got 9 tangent squared plus 9. Uh, the 9 does factor out, so you end up with tangent squared plus 1 if you factor that 9 out. And then tangent squared plus 1 actually is a Pythagorean identity, so if you look at your formula chart, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, this uh, second Pythagorean identity. So you can just replace that whole thing with secant squared. Uh, let me finish the problem somewhere you can see it. Uh, right here. And 9 and secant squared are being multiplied. You can square root products separately. So square root of 9 is 3, and square root of secant squared is just secant. Because square and square root cancel out. You technically would have to deal with some plus minus things, but they do say just keep everything in quadrant one so three secant theta should just be the answer and then click the little theta there Okay, uh, that covers all the questions that I've gotten so far. Uh, the two that y'all emailed last night I covered in the lecture this morning. But just to kind of do a quick recap on them, I had a question about uh, shifting on my math lab. So if you ever take a sine, cosine, you know, any of those graphs, sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, tangent, cotangent, and you want to move it left or right at all, when you decide which shape to click and then you try to graph it, you're going to type in a little box for the shift. 
if it's a something minus pi, you've got to put in a positive pi in the shift so that it goes to the right. So it's the only on the phase shift you kind of do the opposite of what you see. Uh, so that's one of the questions that got asked. The other question, oh no, it had to do with a shift as well. So yeah, if you have theta minus anything, right? pi over 2, pi 3, pi over 5, whatever it is, uh, it's going to shift to the right. The tricky thing about uh, trig graphs and shifting left and right is that it goes left and right forever. So whenever you take something that looks like, for example, if you have a sine graph and you see that it starts at quote unquote zero and you move it to the right or left by a small amount, it's no longer going to start at zero, but you're going to see other stuff. It might even perfectly become a cosine graph. Um, you have to pay attention to how much the shift is. Okay, number 17 on 5.2. Let's do it. Let's close out of this one. And we're going to head to 5.2. Okay, so find the exact value of sine of a mi alpha minus beta, right, a minus b. Given that cosine alpha is negative 3 eleventh, alpha is in quadrant 2, and sine is negative 7 thirteenth with beta in quadrant 4. So you've got to draw two different pictures of two different angles, alpha and beta. So something in quadrant 2, something in quadrant 4. I'll save a little time. I'll just do it on one picture. But uh, you've got to draw a picture of alpha and beta. The sine, cosine, all that stuff, it just tells you how to label the individual x and y coordinates of it. But um, we'll just do it right here. Where is it? Where'd it go? What happened to that homework? <sighs> All right, hold on. <laughs> it just closed. There we are. Okay, so my numbers changed, but we still got quadrants two and four. So alpha is in quadrant two, beta is in quadrant four. So just draw some, it doesn't have to be to scale, who cares, but. So you've got alpha and beta. Now when we talk about the particular reference angle or when we talk about the X and Y coordinates, you always wanna draw your angle back to the X axis, not the Y axis. So our little triangle that we create here, here and here, Based on that reference angle, now you use cosine or sine or whatever they gave you to label things appropriately. So for this one, the alpha one, cosine is negative 2 over 11. Cosine would be x divided by r or adjacent over hypotenuse in geometry world. So negative 2 and 11. Uh, I know the negative has to go to the 2 because the hypotenuse or the r is never negative. Because it has to go to one of them, right? If you have a negative in front of a fraction, it has to go to the numerator or the denominator. Not both. Uh, beta, you've got sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, or y divided by r. And you've got negative 3 and 13. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem on both of those, but the eventual goal is sine of alpha minus beta. Ah. So we want to do sine of alpha minus beta eventually, which again, this is going to be on your formula chart, but it's going to be uh, sine of alpha cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha sine of beta. And that should just be right here. Second one on your formula chart. Replace x and y with whatever letters you need. Okay, all right. So let's actually finish the problem here. So Pythagorean theorem for both here, we get uh, 121 minus four. It's so a square root of 117. Whoa, that's terrible looking, okay. Oh, by the way, this random scratch work that I'm doing, uh, I'll post it on Blackboard too. So, I mean, I'll, not Blackboard, I'll post it on the, the link to the video that I'll have to today too. So I don't know if it'll help, but. Maybe some of you just want to quickly flip through the slides instead of having to click through the video. 
Okay, and then down here, we've got 169 minus 9, so square root of 160, which is going to reduce. All right. Remember, uh, if you need help figuring out how to simplify, because here, we'll, we'll just start from scratch. Okay, so you do 13 squared, so you do 13 squared minus 3 squared. And it doesn't matter that it's negative, it's going to get squared anyway. So you see 160, square root of 160 does simplify. So the little trick for figuring factors that we learned last semester. If you type divided by x and take a look at the table, you want to look for something that you can square root. Now 4 and 40 works, but 40 also divides by 4 again. So you want to try to find the biggest thing that works. So here we've got 10 and 16. I can square root the number 16, I can't square root the number 10, and 10 doesn't break up into anything more that has square roots. So we know that square root of 160 becomes 4 square root of 10. So just to kind of walk you through that process. I know some of you still struggle with uh, simplifying square roots. Okay, so we've got both triangles labeled. We can figure out SOHCAHTOA, sine cosine of both of those, so we just need to plug in numbers appropriately. So sine of, remember alpha is up here in quadrant two. So sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine beta, so beta is down here in quadrant four. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. Minus cosine alpha, that's the one they gave us at the beginning, negative two over 11. Sine of beta, negative three over 13. Oh, sorry, that negative is terrible looking. Yeah. So you've got a double negative over there. So be careful whenever you do that multiply. Uh, so up top, you've got 4 times square root of 1170, which we'll see if that simplifies later. Um, there's a chance it might. And then you've got 143 down here. Minus, and then you have a triple negative here, so, you know, the, one of the negative six, two of them cancels out. So you've got six over 143. Uh, if you're doing this right, for any of those uh, sine, cosine, adding, subtracting ones, you should get common denominators every time. So, you know, tech, oh, you can't even see six, sorry. I keep forgetting about this overlay thing. So your final answer, and we haven't simplified the square root yet, but by the way, I would never give you square roots this big on the exam, but my math lab is a fickle mistress. So that's technically the answer. We do need to double check 1170, but if I had an attempt on my math lab, I would just say screw it, just try it. Uh, here, let's pretend I am a student doing this homework. So we've got four square root. And if it gives me an error, that means I need to simplify 1170. Yeah, see, it's equal to the correct answer, it's not in the correct form, so we do need to break up 1170. Again, that's an annoyingly large number, which I would not do to you on the exam. Let's see, what is the biggest number that's square rootable that comes into here? I mean, I've got 9 and 130. I get the feeling 130 is going to. Does 16 work? Nope. Does 25 work? Nope. Does 36 work? Nope. Whoa. What the heck just happened? I'm getting to like 64. I, I get the feeling I found that. I get the feeling I found the answer earlier. So what did I say? 9 and nine and 130? I don't believe 130 breaks up anymore. So if we factor the, if we square root the 9 out and then that becomes 12 on the outside because 4 times 3, this should be 130. And just off the top of my head, I don't think square root of 130 would break up anymore because it doesn't divide by 4, does it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. 
uh, doesn't divide by 9, doesn't divide by 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. So you get to about halfway. You don't need to check anymore. Um, should be. Yeah, there we go. So again, that first answer we got was correct. We just didn't simplify the square root of 1170. All right. Um, any other homework questions? I mean, I'm, I'm glad y'all are getting something out of this that we're being pretty productive. I had planned on just doing the test review, but this is awesome too. Um, I've been flipping through some of y'all's homework averages. Um, I, I would have liked a little bit better <laughs> average before tomorrow midnight, but uh, half of you are doing fantastic. I'll, is that the positive way to say that? Okay, uh, let me just give you a, a minute or so in chat to see if you have any other homework questions you want to cover. Otherwise, I'll just pull up the test review because that's mostly what I want to talk about today. But, I mean, my time is mostly here for you, so whatever will be better for you. 4-4, uh, four, four, question 7. Okay, well, I see 4-4, four, four, question 7 first in chat, so let me cover that one, and then we'll flip back to this homework if we need to. It doesn't take long to flip, so... Four, four, question seven. We will go through the review. Um, that's mostly what we're going to do today. Oh, it's already been 30 minutes. I can't even believe that. Okay, let's cover these questions that you had in chat, and then we'll skip to the review part. Sketch the graph over the interval. And again, you're not having to do this by hand, but cosine 2 thirds pi, the only ch modification, the only change in the problem is that you have the 2 thirds next to x. So because it's multiplied to x, you're changing the period of the problem. So your default period, oh, your default period is 2 pi. But you have to divide by any number that you have next to x. So you want to divide by 2 thirds. Sorry, divide by 2 thirds. Dividing by a fraction means multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is identical to saying 2 pi times 3 halves. And here the twos cancel, so you have three pi as the period. Okay, so the period is three pi. So when you do this and you want to graph, you have to click the correct one over here. Here, let me get my mouse cursor. I'll see that. So you've got two options here: the sine graphs go here, and the cosine graphs go here. You even see it on the you know tooltip whenever you hover over it. This is a cosine problem, so you have to use the cosine graph. If you accidentally click the sine one, uh, nothing's gonna work. Nothing you do will be correct. So, click it on there. It doesn't matter where you click. And then here we need to change the period to three pi. We don't have any other shifts, so we don't have any vertical, any horizontal, no reflections. So that should be it. So we'll save that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Taylor, was that number 21 back on 5-2, or is it another homework? Twenty-seven, five, one. What about your number 21 you had earlier? Which homework was that on? I'll just open 5 1. Yes. All right, I don't know which 21 you want. So I'll, I'll cover 27 on 5 1, and you type in chat at some point which section number 21 is for. All right, so this problem is in the same vein as the one we did earlier, except there's just more algebra to simplify it. So you've got here. Let's let me make some new slides here. So 
So you got x divided by square root of x squared minus 16. And then they're telling you to sub in x equals 4 secant. Okay, so number 21 was on 5.2. All right, we'll do that after. All right, so you've got 4 times secant to plug into two different places here. And it says assume quadrant 1. It says we're between 0 and pi over 2, so we can do the whole make everything positive answer. All right, so let's write some work here. We've got 4 secant. And then we've got... 4 secant squared minus 16. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the one we did earlier, except we've got things on the top and bottom this time, because uh, the parentheses 4 secant, uh, y'all can't see my cursor, but uh, it's going to square the 4 and the secant. So my next line of work on the bottom is going to be square root of 16 secant squared minus 16. the 16's are going to factor away so your next line of work if you factor the 16's away you're left with secant squared minus 1 and then the last trick here to get this down to something reducible is secant squared minus 1 is again another Pythagorean identity so take a look at your formula chart the second one it's not directly secant squared minus 1 but if you take the 1 here, mouse cursor. So if you take the 1 and you subtract it over to the right hand side, you end up with the equation tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. So secant squared minus 1 can be replaced with tangent squared is the point. So square root of 16 tangent squared. So now at this point, we just have some simplifying to do. Uh, next line of work would be 4 secant divided by 4 tangent. 4s cancel here. And you have secant divided by tangent. So if you uh, rewrite those in terms of sines and cosines, you end up with 1 divided by cosine times cosine divided by sine. And all you've got left is 1 divided by sine, which either they want that or they want you to write it as cosecant. I'm assuming they want cosecant. but There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to open 5.2 now. All right, head back to 5.2. And then number 21. Okay, uh, we had a very similar one. Oh, come on. We had a very similar question to this one in the homework, or in the lecture, I'm sorry. Uh, the inverse cosine and the inverse tangent, uh, you have to, it's assuming that you remember the domain of all your inverse functions. So remember uh, cosine here, let me draw it out for you. So just in general for inverse functions. If you've got anything inverse sine or inverse tangent, you have to be in quadrant one or quadrant four. So negative 90 to 90, or negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. If you've got inverse cosine, that is in quadrants 1 and 2. So you can be between 0 and 180. You're always going to have a positive answer for inverse cosine. So uh, that was from your 4, 6 lecture. So now this is relevant to this problem because they want you to do what is the tangent of, and then you've got something plus something. So tangent of x plus y, alpha plus beta, inverse, you know, the inverse tells you that it is an angle. So really what this problem is asking you for is, okay, I want to do tangent 
of something plus something. Right? Now I've got to figure out what x and y are by drawing pictures of them. So inverse cosine 12 over 13, it's a positive number, so it has to be in quadrant one. So Pythagorean theorem gives me five for the other side. So that's angle number one. Angle number two is also positive, so again, I need to be in quadrant one, but now it's gonna be three over four. So tangent will be opposite divided by adjacent. And Pythagorean theorem gives me five for the hypotenuse. So if you just think of this as x and this is y, you label them whatever you want. But now we're going to do uh, the tangent addition formula, which on your formula chart is going to be right here. Here, I'll move it to the top of the screen. So tangent x plus y. Okay, so tangent x plus y is tangent x plus tangent y divided by one minus tangent x times tangent y. So I only have two numbers to fill in and I'm going to get the answers off of those two pictures. So tangent of x is going to be five divided by 12. Tangent of y is gonna be three divided by four. Oh, they told me that already in the problem. So uh, you end up with 5 over 12 plus 3 over 4 divided by 1 minus 5 over 12 times 3 over 4. And you've got some simplifying work to do there. But. Okay. Man, emails have been blowing up like crazy these last two weeks. We got back to work last week. We were, uh, you know, doing virtual meetings and setting up all our Google Classrooms and stuff. I also drove 20 hours and 48 hours to drive to, it was uh, my wife's aunt's funeral up in the Panhandle in Borger, Texas. So that was fun. Okay, um, everything's a whole number here, so or integers. You don't have to deal with any square roots, so it should be pretty straightforward to simplify from here. I will let you do that part. Remember, you can type all this into your calculator if you really, really want to. Okay, any other questions uh, besides that? I'm just going to go to the review now. Okay. Just let me know if anything comes up while we're talking. But I mean, I'm not, if y'all want to, I can do the entire thing, but I just had a couple in mind I already knew I wanted to talk about on the exam to review. For those of you that didn't get to log in um, any other, or yesterday at all, and if you didn't get my messages, I've been littering the classroom with a bunch of messages, but since we're not doing 5.3 and 5.5 5 anymore, this whole last chunk of the review, you don't have to do. So it tells you the index of the question number up to the top left. You don't have to do anything that says 5-3. So number 37 is the very last one you need to do on the review. So that should narrow down things a bit as far as uh, studying. Also, obviously, you don't have to make a note card anymore because you have access to all your notes while you're taking the tests. And I do realize that. I understand. I mean, that's just one of the things that happens with online assignments. You can try to lock down the browser all you want. People are just going to look it up on their phone. Um, I recognize that you are at home. You can use all your notes. You can probably text or ask your friend and work on it together. I don't care. Just make sure the, the final product that you're submitting to me looks like something you would have turned in you know, on an actual test day in person. Okay, make sure everything is written sufficiently. Make sure you're showing enough work to uh, hopefully get as many of those points as possible. And then the last thing I need to re-emphasize, you've got to turn your test in the same file, same PDF, whatever you decide to make, same thing in Blackboard and Google Classroom. 
Okay, you've got to submit it to both. If you're missing one of those, you cannot get a test grade. Lee College is making it very, very clear we need to do Blackboard. So, I've got superiors that are going to look through our work. So. Uh, pictures are fine. I mean, it's not my preferred method, but uh, I talked about it a little bit in the post. So here, you don't see the actual test yet, but here, I made a post earlier. Here we go. Acceptable forms of submission. If you're using your school iPad to get stuff done, then um, there should be plenty of apps that just let you edit PDFs. I know you don't have um, the App Store, but you could just do it off of a website. There's ones, there's like ones called Small PDF. I mean, there's hundreds all over Google, but you should be able to just upload a PDF, write all over it, and then it'll save over it as a new file. And you can do that. That would be my preferred method. Uh, if you don't want to do that, just uh, open up Notability or open up a scratch pad or whatever you have. And then just write out the solutions. You don't have to recopy the problem. Just, you know, number one and then write everything. Number two, write everything you need. Uh, the last resort would be just, you know, print it out or write on scratch paper and then take pictures and submit it. And that should be fine. The only reason I want you to, you know, not if you can avoid it not to do it is just because it takes up so much space on the server and it takes up space on your phone so if you do that for me for three weeks you're probably gonna kill you know 20 percent of your storage the test is not timed um, I'm gonna open it up at 8 a.m. tomorrow and it is not just as right here in the post uh, it's not closed until 11 59 p.m. so you have got um, 16 hours PDF would be preferred, yeah. Um, I understand if you know if you're having issues with your technology. I don't want that part of it to stress you out. So try out the writing on the PDF stuff. If it's not working, just don't worry about it. But it should be pretty easy to do on an iPad. I happen to have a laptop that has touch screen, so it's really easy for me to write all this stuff. But if you don't have that, or if your iPad isn't working and you're not figuring it out, and the help desk people aren't being helpful, then don't worry about it. If you are going to write and take a picture, you don't have to necessarily use your camera and take a picture picture. Um, you, you can have apps. I use one called Genius Scan. Let me see if I can find it for you. Uh, yeah, see, I have one called Genius Scan. And um, it'll if you just hover your camera over a picture or a paper or something, it'll scan it as a PDF and save it as a PDF file. And it's way, way more compact. So yeah, as long as I get your test by 11.59 p.m., then you will get credit. You cannot be late. Uh, I figure the entire day is sufficient. Uh, extreme worst case scenario, if Blackboard and or Google Classroom are messing up for you, or if the servers happen to be down, or you're just having a lot of trouble, you need to email me within that time frame with your work on it. Just email me pictures if you need to. Um, I will not be accepting any late work, though. Uh, genius scan here. Oh, right, and on the iPhone. I'm sure they have y'all weird iPhone people. Android all the way. Okay, um, let's go over some content on the test review. Uh, so we actually just covered one really, really similar to this, so we're not going to spend our time on that. Um, the first few questions that are just the really easy gimme ones change from degrees, minutes, seconds to uh, decimals, change decimals to degrees, minutes, seconds. Remember, you do have ways of typing those in on your calculator. Oh, come on. Really? Stop stopping. By the way, um, I talked yesterday about how to get this app on your computer uh, or your Android phone if you want. If you have an iPhone or if you're using your school iPad, 
they I think they gave you access to TI Smart View or TI uh, something. That that one, the Smart View thing that I use on my laptop at school, they have a license for that one for your school iPads. You should be able to download it now. But I just have this because it's free and I've had it for a really long time on my laptop. Okay, so if you want to type in 83 degrees, remember you do uh, second apps and you just type in your actual symbols and then for seconds you have to hit alpha plus so you see how the answers match up now the next problem is going to ask you to go the other way around so 21.5344 Hello. And then option four says uh, convert to DMS. Oh, something really nitpicky about uh, your calculator, please don't fall for this, is if you try to, if you put in the degree symbol before you do this, uh, it messes with the conversion formula that it tries to use. So you get the complete, oh, oh no, you must be in a, maybe it's if you're in a different mode. Yeah, see, so if you happen to be in radian mode and you happen to type the degree symbol in on accident, you get the way wrong answer. So uh, just to be safe, don't type the degree symbol in. Also, another big hint is that if you originally had 21 degrees, your answer shouldn't be zero degrees. So hopefully you catch that if you're doing your problem. But Okay, so converting degrees to radians, converting radians to degrees. Remember uh, your general notes for this. So if you want to go degrees to radians, you want to multiply by pi over 180. If you want to go radians to degrees, you want to multiply by 180 over pi. What ends up happening a lot in this direction, the 180 over pi one, is that radians usually already have pi's in them. So whenever you multiply by 180 over pi, the pi's cancel, and you really just end up taking a fraction and multiplying by 180. So that's what you're doing on this one. So this, divide by 180, put a pi on top. Uh, number 14, sure. Okay, so they tell you the quadrant you're in and they tell you cotangent is negative four. The trick here is that cotangent would be x divided by y. It doesn't look like it's a fraction, but the, the y would be one, because it's a, you know anything can be a fraction if you divide by one. So quadrant four, cotangent's negative four. Oh shoot. It's gonna be a big PowerPoint. Okay, so if cotangent theta is negative four, and they tell you you are in quadrant four. Remember cotangent is x divided by y. So because you're in quadrant four, your x coordinate has to be positive, your y coordinate has to be negative, because you're going from the origin, you're going right and then down. So uh, cotangent negative four, so the x coordinate would be four and the y coordinate would be negative one. That creates that negative four effect. Pythagorean theorem here, so you add them together, you get square root of 17. Because remember, negative one squared is positive one for Pythagorean theorem. And now you just uh, find all the other ones. So sine is going to be uh, y divided by r. So I'm not going to do all six of them. but So sine would be y divided by r, which in this case is going to be negative 1 divided by square root of 17. You've got to rationalize that. So that's why the answer says negative square root of 17 over, over shoot. Hello. 
I can't write that far on my screen. Eh, whatever. So use something similar for all of them. For number 14 we're back here a lot of these are gonna be pretty quick uh, co-terminal angles remember the concept of angles is that you can add or subtract either 360 degrees or 2 pi radians as many times as you want and you're still going to be facing the same direction so for this one you add 360 a bunch of times until you land on an angle between 0 and 360 Complements and supplements. Remember, complementary adds to 90. Supplementary adds to 180. In radian world, uh, complementary would add to pi over 2. Supplementary would add to pi. And you do have to work with fractions on those. Uh, these, the pizza problems and the word problems, those are going to be your circle formulas, which are going to be right here. Just in general, all of these, S is going to be arc length, so the actual piece of the circumference you're working with on the outside. R is the radius of the circle. Theta is your angle. A is area. V is linear speed. And omega is angular speed. That should cover all of your uh, variable names. Uh, this, you're using Pythagorean theorem. Remember, uh, the key to this problem is that if it says unit circle, your hypotenuse is 1, your radius is 1. So that should be the missing piece for all of them. Uh, this is now just using a bunch of unit circle stuff. Just please, please know how to look up stuff on your unit circle. You will be doing that a lot. There was one more I wanted to cover in particular. It was in it was a late chapter 4. Y'all just type in chat if there's anything y'all want me to stop and cover. Oh, graphs, uh, not this one, hold on. Yeah, like this one. So um, for the phase shift on something with the number in the parentheses, you've got to factor it away first. So if you look back at number 17, that four in my problem, let me use my mouse cursor. This four is already factored away, so you don't have to mess with anything. Your phase shift is negative pi over four and you don't have to do anything about the numbers in cosine. When you head over to number 18, this 2 pi is not factored away yet, so that means the phase shift is going to be wrong. The phase shift is not negative 2. You need to factor 2 pi away, so 2 divided by 2 pi. So that's why you have negative 1 over pi. That might, here, I'll go ahead and write that out because I know that's a little confusing to hear. So you've got Oh, shoot. So whatever the amplitude was, 4 sine 2. And so let's pretend you had to graph this problem. So you would need to know all of the pieces of information to do it. Um, before you begin, you've got to take 2 pi away from both of those. And when I say take away, I mean divide away. So you're technically dividing both of these by 2 pi. So you've got x plus, and then 2 divided by 2 pi. The 2's cancel, so 1 over pi. I know that's a weird decimal number. I wouldn't make you do that on the test, but you know, you're typing stuff into a box. So whenever you're doing all the pieces of this problem, amplitude would have been 4. I don't have a vertical shift. Your period would have been 2 pi divided by 2 pi, which is just going to be 1. Yeah, the period is 1 radian. That's a weird because you don't have a, a pi in a radian problem. But And then your phase shift would have been to the left by 1 over pi, or a phase shift of negative 1 over pi. So that's why it looks the way it does on the review. Yeah, 
luckily a lot of these homework questions I've been answering for you earlier are already pretty closely related to what's on the review. So yeah, see this, you have the uh, same case here. Negative four needs to be factored away. So you're gonna end up with a phase shift of negative pi over eight or positive pi over eight because it's negative in the parentheses. Um, all these graph ones are going to be pretty similar from there. If you can handle one decently tough graph problem, you should be able to do every single one. That's the nice thing about graphs. Uh, the inverse stuff, just, again, it's a lot of uh, mastery of unit circle things, so just please be careful there. And then, like I said, the 5, 1 material, so um, I think because I had to rewrite your test to cut the 5, 3, and 5, 5 problems. So the 5, 1 material is going to be a little more heavily weighted than original. I think there's three proof problems on the test now. Let's see. But yeah, just pay attention to everything that pops out of 5, 1 in this review. Like all of these, all of these are about the difficulty I would accept, uh, expect and they're all going to be up for grabs. Okay. And then 5-2 I think is a little simpler because you're just doing, you know, sum and difference formulas. The formulas are longer, but the actual work is a little shorter. So it's compared to 5-1. Okay. Um, any other questions? Wow, we've been going an hour now. I can see now why streamers just kind of stream for all day. We can be like one of those crazy streamers that do a 24 hour stream, just stay awake all day. I could not do that. All right, uh, any other questions? Just let me know in chat if you have anything that you want me to cover. I mean, it doesn't have to be about the test even, it can be anything. Um, okay, so I guess we're going to shut it down for today. Uh, please keep, you know, feel free to uh, email me still, even though I'm not going to be streaming. I'll be sure to answer your questions. Um, if any of you are actually doing the whole like notification thing, please don't spend any sort of money and subscribe to this channel. That's not what this is for. But um, if you have the little notification thing, if you ever see me go live and it's not anything that... I announced on Google Classroom, it's probably because I'm just playing a game. So you do not have to log in for all that. But um, yeah, uh, good luck on the test tomorrow. I'll be posting it 8 o'clock sharp. And uh, get it all done and your grade. Yeah, um, exam three, we're going to go ahead and keep lecturing for the, you know, we're going to do 6 1 on Thursday. Eighth period, all four of you, five of you, right? But yeah, I still want to keep the pace that I would have done before because I feel like this setup works. It's pretty similar to what I would have done in person with you, and we can still interact with each other through chat. Um, if you need an individual conference, I do have Cisco WebEx available. I, I know it's not nearly as interactive, but I can talk to you and write things for you, which is better than just emailing you. Uh, that is, that is not the email. Oh, have y'all been emailing that email? No, th uh, that doesn't actually give me any Gmail. So your teachers have that one to access Google Classroom, but it doesn't have an actual email box, like an inbox. You need to email, the, so you see up on my overlay. So the two emails you should be using for me, that one and that one. If you're emailing to student.gccist.net, none of your teachers are going to get any of those. That may be one of the reasons why this is screwing up. Some of your emails got lost. Okay. Yeah, yeah. as far as uh, Lee College stuff is concerned, everything is still the same. Your high school classes have all changed. Lee College specifically told us not to. 
uh, they told us to modify our you know our syllabus and our timeline and you know how we're getting you know assignments from people it mostly affects like English classes and things where they have to do a lot more debate and interaction and stuff like that for us honestly we could have done this online thing all year and we'd probably still be fine because you're doing most of your work on my math lab so uh, all the weights of everything in this class should still be the same as before uh, I'll be a lot more flexible when it comes to you know when I'm going to assign test 3's due date but yeah I still want to be done before you know May 4th or whenever that is even though there's a good chance you're not going to have a prom this year but um, I don't know just to give you a mental break by then yeah a rumor mill is going strong that we're done for the rest of the year so I mean I, I have no official word don't quote me on that anything of the sort but hearing from my friends within the district I have no you know official quotable sources but we're probably done okay um, any other questions again I'm still gonna be available our office hours for math teachers are technically only 8 to 850 I'm going to be available most of the day so please just let me know if you ever have any questions I can even hop on here you know, whenever I'm available okay so that's it for me I'm gonna close the stream now or I, I can keep the chat chat open if you want to talk but I am out